Hello students, welcome to the new lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss the few topics. They are production of paddy, growing paddy and agricultural practices, agricultural task, sowing to storing and preparing the soil, plowing and applying manure, plow and leveling soil. These are the topics. Okay, these are the topics that we are going to discuss in this lecture. Okay, and in the last lecture, in the HDS class, we have discussed about the short night plants, long night plants, and also neutral day plants. So these all are these topics are going to discuss about uh, flowering. Okay, about flowering and uh, about the short night and long night plants. Okay, and so on. So now today's topic is the first topic is the production of a paddy. Okay, the activity four. So in the activity four, there is small activity. This activity is to go to the nearest nearest uh, agriculture area and meet the farmers and meet the farmers and inquire about the production of a paddy per hectare. Okay, so one hectare is equal to two point four acres. Okay, two point four acres is equal to one hectare, and we have to inquire about the how much how much amount of rice is produced per hectare. And the quality of the seeds. Check the quality of the seeds, the size, and also weight, and so on. Okay, about the rabi season size, and also karif season size and weight, and how much uh, how much quantity it is going to produce in a per hectare, and so on. So this is about our activity. And after this activity, there is a small topic that is known as growing paddy and agricultural practices. So what is meant by paddy? What is the difference between the paddy and rice? Okay, so the paddy and rice difference is. So let us consider this is a plant. Okay, this is the plant, the root system, and also the plant. Okay, so on the plant you will see the grains. Okay, the grains are there. So these grains are going to have some kind of coating inside the around the rice. There is a coating. Okay, so this coating will looks like light brown in color. So the rice along with the coating that is known as paddy grains. Okay, so paddy. So if you remove the husk husk means nothing but outer layer if you remove the outer brown the light brown outer layer so the white color portion that is known as rice okay this is known as rice so this is the difference between the paddy and rice so here we are going to discuss here we are going to discuss about growing paddy and also agricultural practices so here the paddy is the global green so what uh, what is global grain? Global grain is nothing but this paddy is used all over the world. So this paddy is grown all over the world, and the rice is eaten all over the world. It is a prime means it is the most important and most essential staple food all over the world. It means all over the world the paddy is grown and this rice is consumed. Hence we are going to call it as global grain. Okay. So the paddy was cultivated in Mesolithic period that is around 9000 to 8000 BC in the Harappan civilization and so on here around through 2300 BC. So BC means before Christ. So this is about uh, the history of the rice. So now a small uh, description about the rice that is. So although it is a crop of crop of warm tropical wetlands, it is also grown in Kharif and also a rabi season. So it means it, it is grown in rabi season as well as the karif season rabi and karif season we are calling it as a warm tropical what is warm tropical especially the india and the if especially telangana if you see in the telangana the more little bit more temperature along with water is also there even though along with water the little bit more temperature is there here the rice is grown perfectly okay and the wetland means more wherever there is water okay so it is it is going to grow perfectly in warm and tropical wetlands okay especially example telangana okay it is also it is a it is grown as karif or rabi crop from rajasthan to arunachal pradesh and from kerala to jammu and kashmir so if, by this way we can we can understand or by this way we can understand in uh, how many wide varieties in, in wide variety of uh, uh, lands and why in the different uh, regions of the world it is grown especially in India okay so this is about growing of the paddy so it is also grown in a cooler temperatures it means wherever there is a place wherever the country or a state or any region if the even though it is cool in place or cold cold climate 
in that conditions also this pad is grown example the some regions of china some regions of china has a little bit lower temperature and japan australia even though these countries has lesser temperature this paddy is grown perfectly okay so india has the largest area and under the paddy cultivation in the world although the although the production of per hectare is low when compared to the china and japan if we compare the production of rice per hectare with other countries so the production of uh, uh, paddy in the in india is little bit low if you compare if you compare here in this table okay in this table if you compare the india as around 40 okay around 40 million hectares okay this is uh, a land under rice cultivation million hectares is 40 and if you compare the china it is 37 and japan it is 25 okay so the total production in the million uh, uh, million metric tons is 79 and also 130 and also 60 and so on so these are all are the uh, table it is going to describe about the how much it is producing so if you see here it is produced per kg per hectare per hectare in this way the value is given okay so the paddy growing field is divided into many plots known as kailu or mudlu so let us consider this the area this is the area of the agricultural land so this area is divided into plots okay the plots are mudlu so this each one is a plot okay each one is a plot or each one is a mudlu or so plots you can call it as mudlu or plots so for better yield of the crops farmers going to take care on different aspects those aspects are nature of the soil first they are going to see how the soil nature is okay whether the soil is porous or whether the soil is non-porous or whether the soil is loose or whether the soil is tight and uh, whether the soil has an aeration or not and so on so they are going to disc they are going to take into consideration all these things humidity rainfall of that region temperature of that region everything they will take consideration all these things and they will select which crop will be better in that area and so on so the farmers starts agriculture work before the monsoon monsoon region especially in uh, may and june so before the may and june they are going to start and also they are going to celebrate a festival in that stay in that uh, in that uh, months that is known as eruvaka eruvaka is a festival it is celebrated by the farmers so after the monsoon okay so if you see the rice is a seasonal task and associated with many festivals so during the rice cultivation many festivals will come the farmers are going to perform many festivals so they are going to celebrate many festivals okay so the sowing transplanting is associated with associated with eruvaka so here we are seeing the words sowing what is sowing let us consider this is a land agriculture land in the agriculture land they will put some seeds okay under the soil they will put some seeds or they will spray the they will uh, uh, they will uh, uh, sprinkle the seeds on the land okay so under the appropriate conditions like light temperature water these seeds are going to germinate okay so these seeds are going to germinate so just to germinate the seeds they are going to put uh, seeds in the soil that is known as sowing sowing means putting seeds in the soil is known as sowing so uh, what happens after a few days they, they will germinate so after germination what, what will happen they will take all these plants okay young plants so they will take all these young plants and they will put in another soil okay they will put in another plot or another mudlu so as a result it is such kind of what transferring from one place to another place or from one place to another land that is known as a transplanting so sowing seeds the transplanting the transplanting uh, plantlets everything is associated with the festivals like eruvaka and also harvesting is also associated with sankranti especially in uh, andhra pradesh and telangana the sankranti is celebrated very much okay especially mainly in, mainly in andhra pradesh they will celebrate a more okay so this is about uh, the seasonal task of the rice growing Associate, associated with festivals like Eruvaka and also Sankranti and so on. So this agricultural tasks are carried out to tune a rhythm of certain songs related to the cultural practices. So if you if you might have observed in the in the villages while they are doing the agriculture work, 
so while they are doing work whether it may be sowing seeds or whether it may be transplanting or whatever the work may be they will sing a song okay they will sing a song while they are doing the work okay so that is the cultural practices so certain songs related to the cultural practices that will be seen in the villages while during the agriculture work okay and the question in the test book is do you sing such song do you know any such song or do you sing such kind of song and this is a question if you know such kind of song or if you don't know collect the songs from your village and sing them in your school in a theater day or it is also known as bala sabha okay so this is about the few information and history about the rice so next is agricultural task sowing to storing okay what is sowing just now we have discussed the sowing is nothing but putting seeds in the soil let us consider this is the soil in the soil we are going to put some seeds these seeds are going to germinate so just to, to germinate the seeds we are putting the seeds in the soil that is known as sowing okay whatever the paddy may whatever the crop may be whether it may be paddy okay so whether it may be groundnut or whether it may be sunflower and so on whatever the crop may be the sowing is the most important of primary step in the uh, in the agricultural practices so after sowing what will happen they will get they will the plants will grow and they will produce grains and after the grains the harvesting will be done and again the seeds or the grains will be stored in the storehouses okay so these are the things it means sowing is the first step and the storing is the last step so we are going to discuss about to how they are sowing and how they are harvesting and how they are storing the seeds or grains etc in this uh, topic okay so in this topic first we have to discuss the few important important steps in the agriculture first is the uh, first is preparing the soil before that we will discuss a few important uh, steps okay the first cultivation of paddy involves a series of activities it means the cultivation of paddy is not a simple thing cultivation of paddy involves a lot of work lot of hard work is there okay so I, I, farmers will do a lot of hard work just to, to produce the so the rice that you are eating okay the rice that you that you eat okay it is not a simple task they will uh, undergo it will under it will take a lot of uh, effort lot of patience and lot of hard work so this is the reason we are calling it as a paddy involves a series of activities okay and agricultural practices agricultural practices are nothing but a method a method to do in the agriculture during the agricultural during the agricultural uh, agricultural production or agricultural practices so to be followed from time to time it means these farmers has to do the agricultural practices and these agricultural practices has to be followed time to time till the harvesting of the crop okay so this is about the steps and here if you see the many crops are cultivated in the same way in the same way whether it may be paddy or whether it may be groundnut or sunflower whatever it may be so almost all these things are going to take same kind of effort same kind of steps and so on but there are few crops they need special methods they need special methods so these special methods are so there are many special methods especially around seven so the first one is uh, preparing the soil after that sowing the seeds what is preparing it means we have to prepare the soil for the and we have to prepare and make sure the soil is ready soil is ready and soil is perfect for the sowing seeds next is the sowing seeds it means the putting seeds in the soil for the germination and to production into the plantlets that is known as sowing seeds next is the applying manure what is manure manure may be anything whether it may be chemical or art, uh, whether it may be artificial or natural so these manures are going to help the crop to grow better okay to grow better these manures are going to help okay next is the facilitate water that is known as irrigation supplying of water to the agricultural crop that is known as irrigation so next is the weeding so weeding is nothing but along with the agricultural crop other unwanted plants will grow 
so these unwanted plants will grow a lot faster more faster and also they will take more amount of nutrients from the soil as a result the crop will not get sufficient amount of nutrients so the weeding has to be done it means the removal of weeds or unwanted plants from the crops that is known as weeding okay next the crop harvesting crop harvesting is nothing but after the appropriate growth and production of the grains so we have to harvest it during the harvesting process we are going to collect the seeds or grains that is known as crop harvesting so after the collecting uh, these uh, all uh, seeds we are going to store the seeds in the particular storage houses okay it means whatever we are getting harvest whatever we are harvesting or we are collecting from the crop that we are going to store in some places okay so these are the steps so in this uh, in this lesson first we are going to focus mainly on the first step that is known as preparing the soil before the sowing seeds we have to prepare the soil how to prepare the soil that is the main task over here okay so preparing the soil soil is prepared before sowing seeds before sowing seeds we have to make sure the soil is perfect okay soil is perfect and it is porous and everything and make sure that we have to we have uh, make sure that soil is perfect for the sowing seeds so to prepare the soil we are going to use different tools these tools may be man powered man powered or special tools just to make the just to prepare the soil perfect for the agricultural practices okay next soil preparation is used for different crops for some reasons so those reasons may be so seed germination if the soil is perfect let us know the soil if the soil is perfect the seed which is there inside the soil is going to grow better okay the soil should be loose it means the soil should not be tight so if the soil is very very tight the seeds cannot grow better so the soil should be loose next is what the soil should absorb water so if the soil absorbs water what will happen the roots the roots of the plant will absorb water through the soil and it is going to help it is going to grow the better okay it means it is going to help the plant to grow better by absorbing water and nutrients next is plowing should be done so plowing should be done make sure the plowing is done just to make sure that the nutrients are well mixed in the soil next is leveling leveling means it, the land will be sometimes up down and so on it means not in a perfect level so in that condition the tool is used to level the soil so the level, the soil will be perfect level that is known as leveling and so on these are the some kind of tools used for the leveling soil or preparing soil okay first one is the plowing and also applying manure okay plowing and applying manure plowing is nothing but to make sure that the the soil is perfect so the fields are divided into plots just now we have discussed let us consider this agriculture area so this agriculture area is divided into plots so these agric these plots are known as kayalu or mallu okay so each plot is plowed and harrowed what is meant by harrowed so the lines harvest the horizontal or vertical lines is made during the plowing so as a result it will the soil will become loose so the main reason for harrowing through the plow is just to make the soil loose okay and this the nursery might be first covered with manure and then flooded so before that what we are going to do we are going to select one plot or mallu we are going to apply the manure okay after applying manure we will water it water will be water will be poured or irrigation will be done and again they are going to uh, uh, they are going to uh, plow the area so as a result the entire the manure and also water will get perfectly mixed with the soil and it will become perfect for the crop so the flooding and also submerges the old weeds and uh, and stubble so old weeds are nothing but if any unwanted plant is there so if by watering and mixing the old weed will get damaged and it will die and it will turn into nutrients in the soil so this is a reason why we are flooding the flooding and submerging the old weeds and next is stubble stubble is nothing but let us consider the agriculture this agricultural land so the crop has been harvested and after cutting the plants will look in this way it means 
so already the these plants are dead okay these plants are dead and some amount of parts some little bit roots and little bit stem is on the ground only okay so this is known as stubble okay it means leftover plant after harvesting so the tiny broken part of the plant which is left over and dead plant that is known as stubble so this stubble and which with it is also mixed with the uh, flooded area or flooded region by plowing so this stubble also going to mix and they will going to decompose decompose means they will get damaged okay they will go, they are going to turn into nutrients okay they are going to turn into nutrients in the soil okay and by releasing the nutrients and also making the soft seed bed so these are old weeds and the stubble uh, both are going to get decomposed and they are going to make the soil softer okay so this is the main reason why we are going to plow and apply the manure okay so next is proper plowing loosen the soil and helps in the transportation of water and air so this is going to help the transportation of water and also it is going to make the soil to mix with air and this is the reason so next is water is stored deeply for long time as the soil is soft so this is the main reason why the water is given so roots are going to penetrate better so if the soil is loose and soft the roots can penetrate better into the soil so the roots are going to penetrate better into the soil if the soil is loose and containing water so and not only that the loose soil going to contain air this air will be utilized by the roots for the respiration means respiration is nothing but taking air from the soil by the roots is known as respiration through roots and air enters easily into the soil it means from the atmosphere the air is going to enter into the soil easily okay and soil friendly microorganisms like earthworms and some uh, uh, earthworms can grow well in the soft soil so if by harrowing or by plowing the some harmful microorganisms uh, in uh, eggs of the insects are going to come out and they will get exposed to the sunlight and due to the sun rays they are going to die so this is another advantage of the plowing the land or mardu or agriculture area okay so next is the plowing so here the plowing is a tool used for plowing usually made up of iron and wood or completely made up of iron and so on so if the plow is completely made up of iron that is known as iron plow okay this iron plow is nothing but it is a plow it is completely made up of iron so the shape of the plow is like a t at the top and a sharp chisel like nail at the end okay here we can see the diagram so this is the wooden plow so this is the wooden plow it is tied to the bullocks at one end and another end it is going to have a chisel a t like shape so this is the t like shape and it is going to look in this way so it is going it is very very sharp okay it is very very sharp it is containing iron nail it is going to deep inside it is going to enter deep into the soil for the proper flowing and pro proper mixing mixing of the soil which helps in the penetrating the soil better for the plowing so this plowing is used for the loosening soil for the better watering crops and also weeding okay so if, next is the another diagram for the iron plow you might have seen in uh, agriculture in the village in villages you might have seen in such kind of instrument so it is completely iron plow so you can see many teeth are present many iron nails are present these many iron nails are going to make the soil loose for the proper aeration loosening of the soil and other benefits so this is the uh, about plow next one will be the leveling leveling the soil so after flow after harrowing so what will happen the soil will be even the soil will be not even okay even after the plowing the soil will not be even sometimes higher sometimes lower higher lower and higher lower in this way so we have to convert such kind of land into even okay in a even way so to convert such kind of irregular land into even surface land we are going to use the leveler okay so leveler is a, a instrument okay it's a containing a blade okay that iron blade is used to make the make the uneven area of the land into even area so what is the advantage if we if you convert such kind of uh, unleveled area into leveled area so the main advantage is water if you water it the water is going to flow evenly onto the surface of the soil so this is another advantage after that you can sow seeds 
on, on the in the soil or you can may uh, or you can put some plants or you can put some kind of a plants in the agriculture field so this is the advantage so to do this process to do the leveling of the soil the leveler is is used this lever is a leveler is a tool it is made up of long iron blade it is tied to the bullocks with one end with a rope or it may be attached to a tractor which is used for the leveling of the soil you might have seen such kind of tractor somewhere else somewhere else in the village or in the city or what it may be mostly you will see such kind of uh, tractors with a leveler in the agriculture field only in this diagram we can see a tractor which is fitted with a leveler leveler in the front front end and the person is going to level the land so this is the tractor with a leveler so it is machine it, it is a machine and mostly in the olden days nowadays also the farmers are using the bullocks with the leveler to level the land okay so what it may be whether it may be leveler with the tractor or uh, bullocks with a leveler so both are used for the leveling of the land okay so this is the boat leveler and uh, how you can do the agriculture process in this way okay and i hope this lecture is helpful to you and if you have any doubts or questions or suggestions feel free to post in the comment section and we will respond to it okay and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the next topic and we will discuss the next topic okay